Hello, today I am doing some branding slash design practice. I've been wanting to do like a design with me video, but I haven't had any clients lately that wanted like the full package of branding and a whole new website. So I decided to just make up a fictional client and design a brand for them and design a homepage in Figma that I will then take into Squarespace in a future video. But first, if you are new here, hi, I'm Jen. I am a freelance web designer and artist. I used to be a software engineer up until about a year and a half ago now. I quit my job in order to pursue this freelancing business full-time. If you're interested in following my journey of starting my own freelance business and starting a YouTube channel, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. Okay, let's get into it. So I came up with a fictional client named Mara, who is a makeup artist, Mara the makeup artist, and she has a business name called Makeup by Mara. I started the project by getting some stock photos. I went to Unsplash and Pexels. Normally on client would provide me with the photos, right? And then I might use some stock photos here and there to kind of fill in the gaps. But in this case, obviously I didn't have any photos because Mara is not a real person. So she couldn't provide me with any photos. The thought process of doing this first was I kind of wanted to see what photos were out there, what I had to work with, you know, thinking that like maybe I can find some photos with a similar vibe or like a similar aesthetic. And then I can use that to kind of inform the way the rest of the brand would look. And then I also went to Google and and searched for other makeup artist websites just to get a feel for what kind of services people are offering and what existing websites already look like. I was taking note of the services that I was finding on some of these websites. Again, normally I would have the client to just tell me their services and explain it all to me, but I didn't have that in this case. So then I started to look up some more website inspiration on Pinterest. I have a web design board where I've saved a bunch of cool looking websites. So I just grabbed a bunch of those that were kind of fitting the general vibe that I had in my head for what this brand aesthetic would look like. And I just pasted them all into this Figma document. I should have made a creative brief for this project and given myself like descriptive words for what the brand should be and what it, what their general vibe should be. I think that would have led me in a better direction in terms of like being able to build out the visual identity. But as it was, I did not come up with a creative brief. I didn't think about that until after I was done with it. So I was just kind of grabbing inspiration that stuck out to me that kind of matched this vague idea of like the aesthetic that I wanted the brand to have. So then I started to brainstorm some of the other pages that would be included on this website. And then I started to think about what the layout of the homepage would look like. But then I jumped into Adobe Illustrator to work on the logo. Before I continue designing, I want to tell you about this new drink that I've been trying out. If you have seen my recent video on how I manage anxiety, you may recall that I am pretty sensitive to caffeine. I can't drink more than like a standard cup of coffee without feeling like really jittery. It also like triggers my anxiety. I've kind of been looking for something that could still give me a little boost in the morning without all of those negative side effects that I get from coffee. So I was so excited when Magic Mind reached out to me to try some of their mental performance shots because this is kind of exactly what I was looking for. This is a mental performance shot that makes you think better and faster. It keeps you focused, it reduces stress. It has caffeine in it, but it's also paired with L-theanine, which counteracts some of like the jitteriness and stuff that you would get from coffee. There are so many amazing ingredients in here. Ashwagandha, turmeric, rhodiola, vitamins B, C, and D. A lot of the things in here I already took in various like pill and powder forms, but this is nice because it all comes in like one shot. They wanted me to do like a seven day experiment to see how I feel after seven days of drinking this. So I have been taking it for the last seven days and I have been so focused on my work over the past week. It has ingredients in it that it's supposed to reduce stress and I have definitely felt that. I had a call earlier this week and I feel like I was just like on point at the meeting. I'm really enjoying these. They also sell these at Sprouts. So if you want, you can try them by just like going and buying them from the store. But if you want a discount, I have a pretty generous coupon code to share with you. It's only available for a limited time. So if you are thinking about it, definitely act soon so that you can get that discount. I'll leave the link in the description below along with the coupon code. 
This is one of my favorite parts of designing a brand is trying to find the right fonts to use. So I just went through a bunch of fonts that I already had saved on my computer. And then I jumped into Adobe fonts on the web to try to find some more possible fonts that I didn't have saved yet. You may call it typefaces. I call it fonts. And I know that's not the right term, but that's just what I'm calling it. So then I took my favorite fonts and I started playing around with the positioning of the words to try to come up with a logo design. I am not the best at creating a logo. Branding is something that I always struggle with, especially designing logos. It is so hard to pin down the exact logo or branding aesthetic that a client is looking for. I don't know. It just seems like impossible to me sometimes to design a logo that a client will like. Pause for the motorcycle. I even recently considered like taking branding services off of the menu from, from my services because I really don't think I'm that good at it. How do you get better at something you practice? So that is kind of part of the inspiration for making this video. I really like this one, but I felt like it was gonna to be too hard to read because it was kind of thin. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. So I went online to see if they had any different weights included in this typeface that I just didn't have downloaded. And turns out they didn't, they only had the one. So I just added a stroke to it. I expanded the text into an object so that I could finesse it a little bit more. And I still at this point couldn't decide if I liked the thinner version or the thicker version with the stroke added to it better. So I decided to like kind of make this hybrid version of it where I used the thinner flourishes on like the M and some of the other letters. I just cut them from the thinner version and I joined them into the thicker version and then spent probably too much time finessing the letters and making them look the way I wanted. So at this point I have been looking at it for too long and I need to step away from it and go for a walk and come back later to look at it with fresh eyes. So next I started to build out the rest of the brand and kind of play around with different colors and different imagery and little graphics. Adobe Illustrator has this tool where you can blend two colors together and you can specify a certain number of steps aka a certain number of colors that it will generate in between those two colors, which I find helpful sometimes for coming up with color schemes. So yeah, I just continued to iterate and play around with different colors until I came up with something that I was relatively happy with. And then I copied this and pasted it over into Figma. I don't know why I do this, but I, I like to design the logo and the brand and stuff in Illustrator. But then when it comes to designing the website and the web pages, I prefer to do that in Figma. It really, it doesn't matter. Like you could probably just choose one and do all of it in one program, but this is just kind of what I've gotten used to. Then I realized that I hadn't picked out the fonts for the rest of the text that was going to be on the website yet. So I jumped back into Illustrator to play around with different fonts again for like the headings and the body text that would be on the website. I didn't want to use the same font as I did for the logo because it's like I said, it's like not that easy to read. So I wanted to have a more readable font that would still kind of match the vibe that I was going for. Once I settled on the typeface that I wanted to use, I went back into Figma and started building out the different text styles, including the button text. Squarespace has three different button styles that you can design with, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So here I am building out all three of those buttons and turning them into components that I can reuse throughout the design. Doing it this way means that if I wanted to like change the color of the button or change any of the styling of the button. I only have to do it in one spot, which is like the master component. And then it'll kind of cascade down. I feel like I'm not, I'm definitely not using Figma to its full potential, but that's fine. Cause I just kind of use it to brainstorm and like get ideas down, but I do know about components. And I also know about defining textiles and color styles, which is what I'm doing here. So then I just started building out the homepage based on the structure that I had kind of thought up before. I I'm not even worrying about images at this point. I'm just kind of putting in placeholder boxes to kind of get a feel for what the whole structure would be like before I start putting in pictures. This whole process is just like a lot of adjusting, iterating, trying to get an overall feel for if the page looks balanced. I didn't know this when I first started designing. I was lucky enough to have a designer friend who kind of like took me under her wing and and was like showing me the ropes. I remember I would see her designs and I would just be like, how did you come up with this? Like this design, your designs are so good. And um, I watched her and I saw like, 
the iterating. I saw the iterating and that's when it all clicked to me. And I was like, oh, so you start with something that's very basic and it just has like the rudimentary elements that you need on the page. And then you play around with the position, you play around with the size and you try adding a few more things. That's what design is all about. Constantly copying and pasting and, and tweaking a thing here and there. Maybe this is obvious to a lot of people, but when I first started designing, I didn't know about this. And also I never went to design school. So maybe this is like thing number one that they teach in design school. I don't know. I, I do not claim to be a design expert, although I am technically a professional because I do get paid to design at this point, which is really cool. <laughs> I kind of like the color combo of light pink with like a cherry red, but I felt like it was too feminine. So I tried something else. There's a plugin on Figma called Grainy Gradient where you can make some pretty interesting looking gradients based on like five colors. And then you can also add noise to it. And then it spits out this image that you can use. I use it as the background. And I decided I didn't want the background to just be all colors. I also wanted to have like image backgrounds. And I added some grain slash noise to that image as well. So then I just continued to iterate the design. I didn't really like the way the testimonial section looked. So I was playing around with that and turned it into this little carousel situation. I added a little gallery because I thought like there's not enough pictures. So then I started to build out the footer. As you can see, I played around with several different layouts. I keep all of the existing designs. I don't just keep tweaking the same design because sometimes you end up preferring one of the older versions, which is actually what happened here with the footer. I preferred, I think it was the second or third version that I made. So then I just started filling in the placeholder boxes with all of the stock photos I had grabbed earlier. And then just some finishing tweaks here and there. And this is coming to a close. And this is the final result of the website. Tell me what you think about it, because let me be honest with you, I don't really like this design. I don't like it. I don't like how it turned out. If this were a real client, I probably would continue iterating in Figma a few more times, but because this was just a fictional client and because I have a lot of work to do, I decided to stop right here. I feel like it's not giving me a cohesive brand identity. I do feel like there's too many pictures at this point. Maybe there just needs to be more space. I also feel like I could add maybe a couple more sections to the homepage, make it a little bit longer add in some more like SEO, be a little more strategic about the sections that I'm including in the homepage. These are the things that I would continue to work on if I were to continue working on this. And I might, I think I do want to bring this into Squarespace at some point and make another video about that. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure you subscribe so you can see when that video comes out. It might be some time before I get to that video, but I will do it eventually. Let me know what you think about this design. If you hate it as much as I do, I don't hate it. It's fine. It just needs more work. It needs to be iterated on a few more times. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Also, don't forget to check out Magic Mind if you are interested in those mental performance shots that I was talking about earlier. You can find that link in the description below. Okay, bye!